Hey everybody, welcome back to another Diecast Review. Today we are taking a look at somebody, a future Hall of Famer, last week's winner, except we're looking at his first career win. This is Denny Hamlin's 2006 Pocono race win. Uh, and this is the first win ever for Denny Hamlin, one of only $2.99 for the Elite Series. So, very cool car. I can't wait to someday try to get this signed because it's a really neat and fairly unique car um, for a number of reasons. We'll get into that. So, uh, let's go ahead, though, and just dive right in. It's an Elite. So, that was the sleeve I showed you. The box has the old actual. It's, it's funny because it's the box I use for this tripod. That's the box it comes in. And, um, yeah, so I use that to, to hold this up. But anyway, actually, I'm going to pull it back down so we can get to the car. So this car has a little bit of damage. I'm going to have to do some work on it, but you'll notice uh, the front wheel, if I do it like this, you see how it's loose. It's busted up there. But luckily, the good news is I know how to repair those. So that'll be one of my tasks. But let's go right into this car because this car is very, very cool. It's the FedEx ground car. I love when FedEx used to do this where they had the colors. So it would be an all-black car, and then it would have either green, orange, or purple, uh, or blue even. It had blue for Kinko's. It had uh, purple for uh, freight. Uh, let's see, what was it? FedEx ground was green and FedEx express was orange. I want to say something like that. Um, but anyway, yeah, it had the different colors. So then you would have the green valence, the green Goodyear logo, obviously that, the outline on the number, and then it was green here, green spoiler. Uh, so just kind of stuff like that, that they would do. Uh, but you can see our number 11, you'll see a little bit of stuff kind of caked up alongside this car. Um, so you see a little bit of that. I'm not sure if it's rubber buildup or a scrape with the wall or somebody. So funny story, or I should say funny, but interesting story about this. He did blow a left rear tire early in the race. And you can see there's some bare bond in here, some bare bond across the back, and some bare bond up here on the deck lid and C post here. Uh, and so that was actually part of it. He blew a tire, went down through the grass, uh, spun, ended up getting it all fixed up, and ended up coming back out and winning the race. Very impressive for a rookie, for sure. Uh, you'll notice some bare bond back here, and then a little scrape there across the rookie bumper. We got FedEx.com. You can actually see the little black fibers on the spoiler. Those are not supposed to be there. Those are actually the little black fibers, as you can see how I cleaned it off there. Uh, there in the midsection, I just wiped across it, but it's those little fibers that come out of the block, the little black cloth bag that protects the car. Uh, we got FedEx ground there on the deck lid. You can see we've got DIN number 150 on there. Uh, we flip it around to the right side. We've got FedEx ground. You can see a little bit there, a little scrape there on that right rear just before the, the wheel. And then we got our number 11. Um, that's right, the exhaust used to come out the left side. I forgot about that. Uh, let's see, we got the green valence up front. We go to the nose of the car. This is where you do get some rubber buildup because these tires used to kind of roll the little rubber chunks just like last week at Bristol. And you can see all that buildup here on the nose of the car. We've got a Monte Carlo SS and you see FedEx ground and a nice black hood there, nice and clean. But then you can see as you get towards the front of that car, this is where all the rubber buildup is uh, on the nose of this car. So that's where it's all at. Now this is an Elite, so we're showing off all the detail today. We're gonna go ahead and pop open this hood real quick if I can get my there we go get a fingernail in there and pop that open so there's our engine detail oh my goodness look at that I can't wait till we ever see this again I don't know if we will but uh we got tethers we got the braces we've got different lines running everywhere you can see the plug wires in there you can see those must be some different I don't know coolant lines fuel yeah it's got to be coolant lines because they're both running in and out of the radiator we've got some coolant lines we've got some belts uh you can see a little canister there running all the way back to the cab so a lot of detail there uh, we close the hood, go underneath, and you can see a lot of detail under here as well, uh, along with the transmission, the drive shaft, the exhaust pipes. Um, you can even see the track bar there. You can see if I do this, functioning rear suspension, functioning front suspension. So really, really high-end detail on these cars. Uh, we didn't even pop open the roof flaps yet. I'm going to try and get one of these to slide open for me. There we go. So I got one of the roof flaps open. They do have the two tethers on them. The tool, this is a feature that will be coming back with the new Elite Premiums. Uh, but you can see there's the roof flap with the two tethers. Uh, and that just slides right back. And then we got FedEx ground here. On the rear, you'll see the little silver spokes separated from the spoiler. Each of these silver spokes on the back of this car is a separate piece that um, is glued or mounted onto this spoiler. And so instead of... Um, 
I'm trying to think if I've got any. Some of them, they were just flat. They didn't even have the spokes or a mold for it. And some of the spokes were just molded in as part of the spoiler. I'm trying to see if I got one up here. I don't. Um, if I had one that didn't have those. But in 2005, I know a lot of them were just the spoiler. They didn't have the spokes. And then they brought the, the spokes back. It was a weird Dodge Charger thing on some of those elites. But anyway, yeah, so that's there. I digress. Let's move this open. You can see the trunk in there. We've got the fuel cell back there, braces and tether, uh, and the two tethers, I should say. And you can see a little cat hair hanging off there. Yoink. I'm going to get that out of there. Um, but yeah, that is our deck lid. Um, we just go ahead and close that right up there. Uh, we do have the metal ba bands across the windshield. And then crazy, crazy good cab detail. I'll see if I can get this uh, window net. Oh, it is open. Let's see here. I got a pair of tweezers, don't I? Where'd that go? I thought I had a pair of tweezers. Maybe I don't. I got, I got a little screwdriver here. I'm going to poke that in there and get that out. Come here. Come on over. Gotcha. So there we go. So then we can pull that down, or at least just kind of tuck it down so you guys can see inside. But you can see, oh, almost, you can see inside we got a little red wire going to the steering wheel. Uh, you can see the shifter in there. You can see obviously the little battery details. There are seat belts in the seat as well. Harder to see because I don't have the light uh, to really get in there and, and show you that. And then each of the gauges actually has some of the detail painted in it. So the tack has all the numbers. The, uh, the oil temp is in there as well. So there's a few of those details that are actually typed in there. Huh, why didn't that go in? Interesting. I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on up there. Uh, is it just blocked? Eh, it's close enough. If it gets up that high, it looks like it's up. I'm good with that. Um, but anyway, yeah, lots and lots of detail. These elites were an absolute blast. I cannot recommend these enough. If you got a favorite driver like a Denny Hamlin, like a Casey Kane, like me, or if you got one that's uh, Kyle Busch, highly, highly recommend picking up one of these old Gen 4 race wins or elites of any kind. These elites are so, so highly detailed. Um, I just, you gotta have at least one. They look so dang good. There's so much detail on them. I highly, highly recommend it. But this is a real unique one just because it was his first win, and I can't wait to get it autographed. So. Uh, anyway, guys, that will pretty much wrap up this review. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, turn on the notification bell and subscribe for more NASCAR diecast content. Other than that, though, that'll wrap it up. This has been Race Craze. We'll see you in the next one.